no doubt you've heard me and others say I use LiveFrog points powered by a CDU. But what does it mean? Let me explain. This is a live frog point. Now, what's actually going on here? This part here is the frog. Now, a railway would call that the common crossing, but we call it a frog. I think it's an American term. And although it's wrong, I'll carry on calling it the frog because that's the term that we know. So you'll see that this rail and this rail are actually connected together. But that's not the live bit. The live bit is the fact that these two rails here, joined, are connected to these two and to these two. You might find, you might see there's a very small insulating break in there, but electrically underneath, this is connected to this. So with the point set as it is at the moment, for the train to travel from here straight through on the straight route. If this is the feed side, then this, 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 and this are all connected to feed, and this rail on its own is connected to return. If I change the point, then this is the feed, and this, 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 this and this are all connected to return. So you can lay these points straight out of the packet as they are. The problem with that is that you are reliant on the blade touching this rail for electrical continuity to get your power from here to from here to here. Now that's fine. We all clean our track, don't we? except that we only tend to clean the tops. If you change your points whilst you've got power running through the circuits, you will get a very tiny spark as the point changes between these two blades here and in this gap here. And that will leave a small black carbon deposit. And over time, that black carbon deposit will affect the electrical continuity between this rail, which you're feeding with your power, and this blade. So we need to do something about that. So the obvious thing to do, you would think, would be to join this rail with this rail. You could bond those two together and you could bond this one with this one. The problem with that is that this and this and this and this are all connected together. So if you bond this to this and this to this, what in fact you're doing is joining this rail to this one and of course you'll get a short circuit so that isn't a simple solution but let's have a look on the back now on the back here are the three key elements of the electrical connections here is a wire which joins the two bits of the frog together and if i move this you'll see that there's a loose wire here that you can connect the frog to something else. The blades, as we call them, that's this rail here, is actually joined to the frog by this connection here. You can see there's a very small bit of wire in there. And also you can see that we have a gap in the sleepers here, which allows us, if we want to, to bond the rails together. So, in fact, what we've got to do is a threefold operation. First of all, we have to break these bonds here. Then we have to bond that rail with that rail. And then we have to tie somehow these rails in with the frog. And here, as they say, is one that I've done earlier. You can probably just see that I have broken the bonds here there's a clear gap between that and that, which means that there's a gap now between the blades and the frog. That enables me to bond the two rails together. You can see I've bonded that.
that across there, that across there. And I've done that with these wires. And you might think, well, why have I done wire? Why not not just put a little bit of something across there? I need to switch the polarity of the frog. And that's what this wire would normally do, except that I don't use that wire. What I do is to use a wire fixed to a fish plate. Much easier to solder on, no damage to the point, and I'm not relying on that flimsy bit of wire that's on the underside. I've now got to find a way of changing the polarity of the frog so that either this rail connects to the frog or this rail and this wire connects to the frog. So we need some kind of switch. And here are three options. You've got a Pico point motor or similar that's got a PL13 switch on the top so as the point motor changes this switch changes and you can see that if you connect the frog to that connection there and then you either have the, the positive or negative rail connected to those two you can see that that switch will change the polarity of the frog. This is a seat point motor that has a switch built in. You've got connections here to run the point motor and there are three connections for the switch so as the point motor changes again so the switch moves from one side to the other. The third option is to do what I've done in the storage signings at Yarslow and that is to use a switch on here or on here to power a relay. But what does that actually mean? Well it, it means that in this particular setup here this um, point is going straight on. This is known as the normal position. The rail nearest to us is the feed, the far one is the return, the blade is a return, the point motor switch directs a current from this rail into the frog which means that this bit and this bit are also return. If the point motor fires, this point is now in what's called the reversed position, that is, the train is going to go round the corner. Near rail is the feed, this blade is a feed, obviously it's bonded together, as is this rail. The point motor switches the polarity of power from this rail into the frog, so this is feed, this is feed, this is feed, this is still return, this is return. So you can see now that you've got feed through here, return through here, and the train will run. There are no dead spots anywhere on here that the train will stall because everything has got some power going through it somewhere. And here is what that looks like in a layout situation. You can see here are the bonded rails these cables, these, these will disappear under scenery in due time. And in here, you see the yellow and black wire connected to the fish plate. So that's the frog. These brakes here have been broken underneath. The joins have been broken underneath. So this is bonded to this. This is bonded to this. And as this point changes, I do that with my so the polarity of the frog changes. Okay, that's done underneath in this case by a seep point motor that's got a switch in it. Now, on my layout, I have a set of points over there under the bridge. That's point set 21. And the control lever for that, one of those yellow ones, there. And that's a distance of about 15, 16 feet of wire. Now, in normal circumstances, you could use really heavy duty cable to make that run, or you could give the power for the point a bit of a boost. I've dived under the layout now to see here's my 16 volt AC supply, and here are two wires 
leading to this little thing, which then lead off to the points. So what's this? Well, this is called a CDU or a capacitor discharge unit. And they either come as single coils, this is about 2000 microfarads, I think, or they come as double coils. Now CDU stands for Capacitor Discharge Unit and essentially all it does is to give the signal, the power that goes to the point motor, a bit of an extra oof and this is how you wire them up. You grab a 16 volt supply, which in my case is one of the Hornby wall controllers, provides power for the CDU. Now the CDU is wired next to the point motor and the switch. The negative of the CDU, the negative, and they are marked, of the CDU output, always goes to the point's common return. Okay, so that goes to there. Positive goes into the centre of that two-way centre-off momentary switch. The two sides of the switch go to the two sides of the motor. And it will take you a little bit of experimentation to make sure that you get this the right way around so that when the switch is up this is in the normal position and when the switch is down it's in the reverse position but essentially what happens is you close the circuit here the capacitor discharge unit sends a, the power through the circuit and the point motor changes and what the capacitor discharge unit does is rather than just closing a little circuit and going boof to change the point motor when you change the switch it goes woof and that point motor can change. And that's important if you're sending that um, signal down that cable for a long distance. So there you go, capacitor discharge units and live frogs. Hope that makes sense. If you need any more explanations, leave a comment down below and I will come back to you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. Come and join the party. Join in with what's going on on the Yarslow layout and some more of these bite-sized bits and I'll see you soon.